Hey! AC! Oh my god! Oh, I'm 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 okay now. Yeah, I'm okay now. Uh, still a little bit, um, some weird pressure behind the eyeballs. You know that pressure behind the eyeballs feeling. Yeah, is that is that sinus? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Just weird. Maybe I haven't maybe I need to go outside more. Oddly. Kappa is teacher's teacher's pet. Wow. Good job. Good job, Kappa. Incredible. 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 Ah yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be what it is. Hmm. Nice, nice try, Kappa. Nice try. Uh, you don't, uh... Nice try. A for it. Yay! Oh, where's my, uh, streamer music? Jeez. Where is that? DMCA free. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Got all the pieces of a stream. Is my screen, okay, my screen's working. All the elements of a successful stream are now activated. All right, students, uh, trickle on in. I understand if you're uh, not watching, uh, because you're captivated by some other things. Fine. Fine. I'm not the most interesting thing. I, I, I get it. I get it. But um, I'm still going to give a lecture and it'll be available on the YouTube for you to watch uh, when you'd like to watch. Yeah? I'd like to think that I'm right there next to your news source right next to it. With my big old face, but uh, something tells me mm, that's not the case. All right. Characters? No. We won't talk about characters. That's probably not going to happen. Hey, Crow! Teacher's pet! Wow! Incredible. Hey, Crow. This is what I have to say about that. Where am I typing? Here we go. Oh, nice, nice morning emote. That's cool. <sighs> Let's start class. Hi, Sloth. I see you there. Thanks for coming to class. And another student is here, probably. And who knows who else is here. Okay, I'm going to talk about three things today. Probably 2.713 things to give you. You're probably looking at numbers all day anyway, so maybe I'll get to the third thing. But the first two, I need to I need to take a step back and say, where the heck do rings show up? Why rings? I'm pretty sure you agree that groups are important to study. The concept of symmetry, just in general. Super natural thing to study. Well, rings are also natural. And I'm going to tell you my little, what I feel when I think of rings. 
Then we got to look at examples of ring homomorphisms. And you're going to have definitions like kernel and image, just like previously, and just like in linear algebra. This is abstract algebra. Lots of algebra becomes unified. Concept of an ideal in a ring is the third thing, and that's going to be um, sort of like the normal subgroup part of group theory. That's kind of where that's going. Okay, why rings? I'll tell you where the concept, the ring theory sort of emerged. Out of what mess of ideas did, the, did, did someone sit down and say, you know what, maybe we should once and for all, write down a mathematical object, super general, which captures this whirlwind of mathematics that's happening. Okay, so that, let me show you uh, one thread. The first thread, the main thread, was the study of integers. I can't tell you, I can't go through the history of the study of integers. But come on. If anything is called mathematics, it's the study of whole numbers. Okay, that, that's the least fake of news. Okay? Now, what happened when people studied integers? They started noticing things. They started noticing things like Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. See, what happened was people noticed that there were special numbers called primes. And that every other number or every number is a product of primes and it's a unique product you the the decomposition into primes was a unique thing they just uh, like accumulated facts about the integers okay and all the while all the while There was that second thread going through the history of mathematics. And that thread is called, what the heck is a number? You see, this second thread was going, and we had people, geniuses like Euler, uh, figuring out, oh, look, there are these prime numbers, and they're good. This other thread was also happening. What the heck is a number? You know, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This was about uh, 3 trillion BC. Okay. And then uh, negative 1, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 2, negative 3. Mm-hmm. This is about 2 trillion BC. Um, and then zero came around about uh, 1 trillion. Zero was allowed to be a number uh, at that point. The, philosoph the philosophical debate was over. And then uh, uh, there was only one goat, but three people. And so, like, you know, you got these. This is about uh, 0.5. One half trillion, because now there's now one half trillion became a concept. What the heck is a number? All of these suddenly became numbers, and then uh, and then some some guy uh, I don't know two thousand BC took there's some long time um, square root of two. Uh, what? That's a number apparently. That's allowed. A pi? What? And then, um, 
about 500 years ago. Square root of minus one. Even to this day, students of mathematics don't believe that this is real. That's why they call it imaginary. Uh, even today, uh, people don't believe in this. It's called imaginary for some reason. But if you look at it mathematically, the reasons for incorporating each new notion of number were completely justified and simple. You're just trying to solve slightly harder mathematics problems. And once the mathematics problem gets a little bit harder, you invent a new concept. And that's the history of numbers, the progression of the concept of numbers. That's what's happening. That's the second thread. And all the while, there's these people who are studying integers, like prime numbers and so on. And what ring theory did was it said, look, every time you add in new, uh, expand your notion of number, you still retain the ability to add and multiply. And using only those concepts, you can still think about the concepts of primeness and prime factorization if it exists. And that confluence of observations in the 1800s culminated in someone saying, you know what, hold on. Every time we have a new notion of a number and we write down how to add and multiply, we seem to be doing the same underlying fundamental thing. And those underlying fundamental things were abstracted away because of how often they occurred. And that's where ring theory was born. So we, throughout all of the threads, the concepts of adding two things and multiplying two things persist. And so it was kind of natural to just sit down and say, look, maybe we should just sit down, lay down the rules of adding and multiplying in all contexts. And that's where you get ring theory from. All right. Ring theory is the abstraction of the concept of numbers, the adding and multiplying operations in particular just as group theory is the abstraction of the concept of symmetries. Great. Okay, so there's your motivation. Um, there's way more to be said about these two threads. The first thread becomes an entire subject. I mean, both of the threads combined. This one becomes the subject called uh, number theory. And this one becomes a subject called Galois theory, which we will study very thoroughly next semester. All right, good. So let's go. Oh, what's, what's going on here? Irrationals were known to Pythagoras. Yeah, that's Pythagoras was what? 2000 BC? I don't know. Shouldn't you mention the algebraic numbers? Yeah, there, uh, yes, there are more algebraic... Uh, there, there's an algebraic number, okay? We'll mention that when it shows up. Yeah, but there's, I already mentioned an algebraic number, square root of two. Okay, here's another algebraic number. Okay, great. Um, we will study, uh, in a sense, all the algebraic numbers next semester. Okay. Irrationals were known to Pythagoras, kind of. One of his students actually discovered the irrationality of square root of two and then reported it to Pythagoras. 
I think that's his name was Hip, Hip Hippasus or something. Um, anyway, so let's uh, move away from that. It's it, what matters is where ring theory comes out. What is the overall situation? Okay, examples of ring homomorphisms and kernel and image. Let's do that. Didn't they hate the irrationals? Yeah, yeah, they believed in the principle of commensurability. That if I take any two measurements in this world and I divide the two, I will get a fraction. They said, oh, look at my guitar. If I pluck the string exactly one half of the way, I get a beautiful thing. Let me demonstrate. You get something called an octave. So beautiful. Hey, when I pluck the string one third of the way, I get another nice pair of very harmonious notes. Um, perfect fifth or something. Without that, wouldn't be possible, they said. So, how can this be? There's a conspiracy here. Fractions rule the world. They produce the most beautiful things. Measure the distance to Venus and then measure it to uh, Neptune. Oh, wait, Neptune wasn't around. Uh, sorry. Jupiter, measure those two, divide it, get a perfect fraction. How'd you do the measurements? Don't ask. Okay. Everything was a fraction. They believed that shit. And then one of their own drew. I, why am I talking about this? Okay. One, this was just motive. Okay. One of their own drew this. And they said, right? Right? Okay, we all know the story. We all know the story. Okay, that poor student went to Pythagoras, the dear leader, must have been quivering. Report the news. Sir, not everything is perfect fifths, minor third, major fourth, whatever, more major sixth. There's some weird, there's some weird chords out there, folks. Okay, so anyway, now you understand. Now you understand the motivation. Okay? You understand the motivation. That's right. That's right. This, this is what Pythagoras responded with. Pythagoras just threw this in the student's face. Threatened. I'll clean that one, one day here. Okay! Homomorphisms. Let's go back to let's go back to the back to definitions. Definition land. Homomorphisms. I defined what a homomorphism was last time. Ring homomorphism. So I won't do it again. I'll just dive in and start um, homomorphizing uh, left and right. Okay, left and right. Here we go. Um, here's an example. Uh, consider the following map. I'll call it I for Z mapping to Q. An integer 
goes to um, that fraction. I for inclusion. This is a ring homomorphism. Obviously. Okay? Awesome. Example. There are no ring homomorphisms There are none. Why? Why? Because. Uh, one has to go to one. Yeah. That has to go to one. That's that's the rules in ring homomorphisms. Even if you relax this and do the other kind that the book might allow, even those. Not possible. Okay, so why? Let's do one goes to one, but then one plus one goes to one plus one. Additivity of the ring homomorphism. So, 2 goes to 2. No matter- I don't care how creative you are coming up with the ring homomorphism. 2 over 1 has to get mapped to 2. Jeez, okay. But then... There is no place to send 1 half. There's no place to send one half because wherever it goes, it times the output of two has to be the output of one. Multiplicative respect. But there's no place to send one half. There you go. You can't ring homomorph from Q to Z. Great. Example. Reduction. Mod a prime. Okay, this one I'm giving a special name to because of how frequently it arises. Just as an idea. Okay, here we go. Um, let's call it. Uh, let's call it row. An integer gets sent to its residue mod mod p, its remainder mod p. Okay, this is a ring homomorphism. Now, there's something that I need to emphasize here so that students don't get confused. Okay, there's something that needs to be um, emphasized. That is, uh, students. Um, how sure are you that um, Z mod NZ is a ring? Now, you might believe it and so on. Have you seen the proof that the multiplication rule is well defined? The, uh, the fact that addition is well defined, we already know. We already know that because that's group theory. That's a group theoretic situation. But the multiplication rule, why does it, why is it well defined? That is a small point that we never actually, well, you do address it in 3613, but maybe that's rusty. Don't worry. When we talk about ideals, we'll come back and this will be, this will come out in the wash. Okay, so this is a small note. Assuming you n agree that Z mod NZ is a ring with the, uh, with the multiplication rule as you learn, then this will be a homomorphism. This, that's clear to you. 
Okay, so that's reduction mod P. Why is this so, uh, why does this de deserve its own name? For the following reason. You might have a math problem. Where you only allow integer But sometimes what's con what's useful is to reduce the coefficients of the math problem to apply this homomorphism to the stuff in the math problem. And sometimes mod P, you can somehow deduce that there are no solutions. And that helps you that helps you conclude in the original math problem that there were also no solutions. So reduction mod P is universally very, very often frequently used principle. Okay? Maybe you find no solutions. And then deduce something. about original problem. For example, why doesn't x squared minus 101 y squared equals 2 have any integer solutions? Actually, you can reduce mod any number, so, or any number. But primes are usually more useful. However, in this case, you can reduce mod 4. And see the usefulness of this, applying this homomorphism. Okay, great. So that's reduction mod a prime, or, or a number, more generally. Okay. Here's another ring homomorphism. Another one. Um, this, uh, I'm going to show you a homomorphism. It's called evaluate at four plus two I. Let me, let me give you the formula. A polynomial with complex number coefficients goes to this complex number. That's a ring homomorphism. That's, that's multiplication. Addition is similar. All right. The polynomial one, which is the, the multiplicative identity in both rings, that goes to itself. Plug any number into one, you get one as a output. All right. So evaluation of polynomials at particular elements is a ring homomorphism. All right. Here is something that's not a ring homomorphism. Hold on, hold on. Here's a non-example.
differentiation. Take a polynomial, do prime. Prime it. Not a ring homomorphism. Natural, sure. Not a ring homomorphism. Does it respect addition? Yes. But famously does not respect multiplication. So not all natural maps between two rings are necessarily homomorphisms. Be careful out there, folks. Be careful. Okay? So this is... There is a way of talking about this kind of map, but you'll learn that in uh, 23rd grade. Right now we're in 15th grade. So you'll learn about uh, that this kind of map 23rd grade. Okay, great. Um, awesome. So next, what should I do? Um, I'm going to be... This exam is just me asking you whether this is a homomorphism, this is a ring, is this a unit, is just definitions that we've covered in, the, in lecture. Um, let me make sure I've given you enough good examples um no here's an example example if r is a ring then the map i from R to R adjoin T. Remember, this is just polynomials with R coefficients. Coefficients in the ring. This, uh, the maps being an element R goes to which we'll just write R. Why not? Constant polynomials. Polynomial goes to the constant, constant, only a constant term. That. This is a ring homomorphism. Okay? Non-example. We'll call it L. Element goes to that polynomial, R times X. Respects addition. Does not respect Multiplication. I want to just throw as many you might have. Uh, the more examples you see, the more your concept or conception of what a homomorphism feels like gets um, shaped. And it's important to use examples to shape the definition, understanding of your definition. It's actually the most important part of learning math to shape your intuition by looking at what's an example and what's not an example. Good. Um, is there another one I should do?
Good. I think that's good enough. Composition? Oh, composition. Linear maps. With composition. Oh, but that's an example of a ring. You mean? That's an example of a ring. Yes. Yes. Let me... Okay, let me... Let me show you Kappa's example of a ring. Um, example just of a ring. Is this what you're saying? Um, so let... But... Okay. Yeah. So if V is a vector space... Over R, say... Okay, uh, Kappa needs 27 lines. If V is a vector space over R, then um, we let end V equal the set of linear maps. Linear transformation. Okay, 27 lines, Kappa, uh, other Kappa. All right, this thing, this is a ring. Under um, adding equals add to transformations. And multiplying equals compose to transformations. Um, now this thing is we, you've actually seen a version of this one. Two by two matrices over the real numbers. So it's not really a new example, um, but might as well put it because Kappa wanted me to say something about it. This is a ring. It's not commutative. Okay, yeah, it's a ring, and uh, maybe you can find ring homomorphisms examples using this one. You can. It's uh, um, there are many homomorphisms out there. It's important to uh, try to connect as many rings as you can together. Okay, um, so finally, uh, let me move on. Oh. Kernel and image. Kernel and image. More definitions. If phi from one ring to another is a homomorphism, then we define the kernel in the obvious way. The way that you think. I put subscripts to emphasize, yeah, okay, where the zeros are, where things are happening, all right? And the image I mean it's all the outputs, okay? Now let me let me let me say something. Easy. Easy proof. E easy statement. The image is a ring. It is a sub ring of S. A sub ring by definition of S is a subset. First of all, it's a subgroup under the group structure, abelian additive structure, and it has to inherit the same one. The one of S is the one of the subring. Together, it, and it has to be closed under multiplication 
the multiplication structure of s. It's what you think it is, but remember that the one of the subring is the one of s. Just make sure you but dot that i. Okay, make sure you impose that. Okay, so um, p of r is a subring of s. Why is the one contained in that subset? Because we force that ring homomorphisms send the one in R to the one element in S. That's part of the package. Okay, so phi of R is a subring. Easy statement number two. Kernel of R. No, kernel of phi. The image. Kernel of phi is usually not a subring. Let me show you an, the, an example. Example. Reduction mod 2. All right. This map, the kernel, is the set of even integers. Which we write 2z. Now, 2z is not a subring. No one. It's not even a ring. But it is a it, it is a rung. Okay. So e easy. Kernel is not a ring necessarily. Very rare. In fact, very rarely, like basically never, is the kernel a subring. We sh you should think about that. Image is always a ring. Okay? Yes. Good, good, uh, um... Good advice, AC. Okay. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so, good. That's kernel and image. Just like in group, group theory, there's kernels and images, except for this small difference with the kernel. Small uh, detail. All right, we will isolate this kind of a situation, this kind of situation. We will soon abstract it. 2z inside of z is not a subring, but it is what we call an ideal. And we're gonna sort of abstract that notion soon. All right, but first, kernel -y types of math. Usual kernel-y stuff. How to tell if a ring homomorphism is injective? Answer. Obvious answer. The kernel is zero. Why? Because a ring homomorphism is a group homomorphism of the underlying additive abelian groups. 
And we already know from that situation that knowing whether a group homomorphism is, is injective or not is knowing whether the kernel is trivial or not. All you gotta look for is how many elements map to zero. How many redundancy elements crashed at the zero output instead of having to check every pair of elements. Yeah, so kernel is sort of plays that role. It's the gatekeeper of injectivity. All right, great. So that, that stuff happens just like before. Oh, oh, Gath is here. Gath, incredible chemistry teacher, professor. And just check out how awesome her classes, online classes are organized and just structured. Actually don't, I always do this. Don't look over there. Do not go there, especially students don't go there. I don't want people to think that it's possible to teach online really, really well. I don't want that to be known, you know? I don't want to... I don't want people to think, you know what? Maybe OSU can expand its influence in this region with great teachers. Look at Gath. Gath can pull it off with a hard subject like organic chemistry. Why can't the math department do it? I don't want that to spread. I don't want that. I want to go back to normal, like old school. I don't want to capitalize on this opportunity. No. Gath is the wrong person to look at. Okay, next. Next. Um, Colonel, okay. Colonel, let's look at... Oh, damn. Kernel. I'm going to say the last sentence. Although the kernel... aren't rings... they do have... certain peculiar properties. Subrings. And I'm going to list two of them, and then we'll continue with it on Monday. Two of them. One. If A and B are in the kernel, then, of course, A plus B is in the kernel, too. That's because ring homomorphisms are group homomorphisms. Plus multiplicative respect. And this was true. You have a subgroup. It's a subgroup. Group theory hasn't become wrong in the because we switch subjects. Two. Pay attention. Two. Look at this one. This one's interesting. If R so here's our homomorphism. If R is any element, and if K is an element in the kernel, then R times K is again in the kernel. The way this is said is that uh, the kernel, one way of saying this is that the kernel is closed under arbitrary outside multiplication. It's not just closed under multiplication within itself. It's like you pick an element in the kernel and then pick anything else in the ring and multiply, you will again land in the kernel. It's closed under more, it's closed under outside multiplication, 
not just internal. That is an important detail of the peculiarity or the interest of subsets which are kernels. And so we're going to abstract these two properties away and define a notion of what's called an ideal in a ring R. Okay, so that's coming Monday. Ideals and quotient rings, those two things go hand in hand starting Monday. Okay, announcements. Students, students. I, I, I highly doubt anyone wants office hours to, uh, this today. Um, so no office hours. You can ask me questions on Discord though, or each other. Okay, no office hours. I will be on tomorrow after, after my recording session, if I'm not exhausted, you can ask me questions then, but uh, no office hours today. Um, you found a ring homomorphism whose kernel is a subring, Kappa? Did you find one with a sub subring? Oh yeah? Oh yeah, whoa. What, what was the, what was the homomorphism? Good, good example. Zero map to the zero ring. Awesome. Great examples, folks. No, actually, any map to the zero ring. The only map. <laughs> the only map. The kernel equals R, which is a subring. All right. Yeah, he scammed me. Scam. Okay, credits. Good job, Kappa, because that's that was going to be basically one of the questions that I was going to ask in the exam. Maybe I'll still ask it because no one's watching this. But Kappa, thank you for um, participating a little bit too much, if that's possible. Okay. All right, so Kappa gets um, for ruining an exam joke, uh, exam problem. Algebraically challenged. Keeping, keeping the peace, maintaining the peace. Who else was here? I got to now check. I gotta check what happened in this horrible lecture. Hey, Kappa with the bad jokes. Gath. Switched colors. Hangs mate in one. Awesome contribution there. And that's about it. About it. Oh, who are the teacher's pets? Who are teacher's pets? Let's see. Pro? And Kappa. Wait, hold on. I gotta check things. Wait. Is Crow still a sub? Let's, let's make sure. Um, before I do this. Oh, good. Yeah. Let me just confirm. Okay, good. Yeah. Awesome job, Crow. Wow, incredible.
Great. RDL is here. RDL is here. I think another is here. Sloth was here. Etc. Maybe. Okay, awesome. Read the chapters uh, 13, 14, 15. I'm kind of going in parallel. Okay. Um, Kappa Votes was here. That's true. Kappa Votes. Other Kappa. Great. Shungite. Oh, Abdul Rahman, a.k.a. Quintuple A, Shungite, wanting Shungite infusement. Oh, former student. Quintuple A. Former student and heavy contributor to the success of the Discord during Calc 3, COVID Calc 3. In Tupelo, never forget. Awesome, just all over the place, answering questions. This is great. Hope you learned something in Calc Three. Okay, um, thank you, Dickle Chips. I think there's a typo in your name. A Agriventure. Okay, me. Thanks. Okay. Okay, someone's trying to... Okay. It was a good lecture. Take care, everyone. Not trying to make it into the credits. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, right? Hangs mate in one? Hangs mate in one. For calling a spade a spade. <laughs> Can you believe that? Can you believe that? The gall. Can you believe that? Where? M4X484. The gall. Kappa needs help? Kappa needs help. You mean, you mean this? Is this, is this the problem? Is this, is this the level of, of discourse around here? You guys know this is a math, like a math major class. And this is, this is what we're talking about. Not kernels and images and what's a homomorphism and how many rings do we know? No. We're talking about PP legs. Okay. Okay, Kappa. There you go. <laughs> okay, well, I've got to learn more ratio test, root test, and then uh, strategies 
for convergence and divergence. So I gotta go. Ah. You all, oh, I gotta roll this. So this was today. This happened today. Oh, <laughs> hey, look. Look at that. Hmm. You guys, you guys ever watch the show Blue's Clues? You guys ever watch Blue's Clues? Maybe not. Maybe it's just an American thing. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so here are the credits. Um, <laughs> great individuals. Particular individuals in the chat. Making the stream what it is. Of course, there's me who's providing all the knowledge. But let's forget about that. We've got all these great luminaries. Hangs mate in one calling out M4X484. That was that was brilliant. Um and uh I'm so glad y'all came. Gath You know I'm literally scrolling with my finger. This is not some high production. This there's nothing to steal here. I'm just literally writing stuff. And then scrolling down with my finger. Yeah, you're gonna get DMCA. Or in French, I guess it's DCMA. Um, I probably change it. Okay. Hangs mate in one. You th should be. Hangs mate in one. You, you you've never seen this before. This is like original. Hangs mate. Well. Now we'll make hundreds of dollars. You and me. Hangs mate. You and me, business partners. Right here. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Okay. Gath, you have to now. You have to. Have to. I don't. I don't make up the rules. Sorry. I mean. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> That's the calling tips. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, you all want to go, uh, see what New York City is like? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, those are, you're paying for the rights to use this. Right. Hey, you, you want to go see New York City? Okay, that's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't care if you want to or not. I'm just going to go, let's just go to New York City. See what's going on over there. There's a bike. We're going to go onto a bike in New York City. All right? Go and BM Pog. Oh, wait. They can't see our emote. So just... Just close the window and, and do your own thing. Okay? There you go. Just... I don't... Just do... Be your own person, you know? For once. Where, where's the... Okay. Okay. There you go. 